What's up guys, CJ here and welcome back to another all new episode of Hybrid TV where we break down all the biggest news happening on the small screen. I'm joined as always by Will. Uh, fun fact, Scooby-Doo's birth name is Scoobert. Discovered it is Scooby-Doo. Scoobert Do, as we, we got to the bottom of that uh, right before we started recording. And Tim. How's it going, everyone? And uh, we now know that the Dark Tower series has officially landed at Amazon. Now, guys, um, this is a little bit of, like, a weird time for streaming networks because we're, like, I would say maybe only a year removed from the idea, like, the statement streaming services might be the new future of television because Netflix and Amazon are only putting out quality shit. We're about a year removed from that statement being, I would say, more or less arguably true. Now, with Netflix's new strategy of, we're going to publish the bullshit, you know, just to get some more, <laughs> more stuff on our platform. Like, you like bad movies? A Netflix subscription has never, you know, meant more. Amazon, I think, still has a little bit of a better track record, but what do you guys think about this? I mean, this is... Uh, you know, I, I personally think Amazon is a pretty good home for 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 uh, you know for a, a property like Dark Tower because I think you know specifically, I think Netflix is kind of taking a back seat in my opinion. I think Amazon is edged ahead. Uh, uh, well, it depends. Uh, it depends on what you're looking for with it. Like the main issue that um, Netflix has is just them constantly cycling stuff out. Because otherwise they would just like have a definitive edge of just go there to watch anything and then you have the bonus stuff and then Amazon you have to pay for like the movies that you get on Netflix. Yeah, and at the same time for the Dark Tower, are they keeping with that idea that they had where they're having Idris Elba and the kid returning for the show? So that was or, originally the idea, and like as far as we um, know, even after the movie came out, even after the movie came out, Idris was attached. Idris and the kid were still involved, and I kind of like rolled my um, eyes and laughed and said, "Sure, okay, um, exactly. Can they All right, him? Idris, if this is what you want to do." Uh, yeah. <laughs> but Stephen what, King actually going to be expensive, man. Stephen he probably will. Stephen King claimed that it was going to be a reboot. Uh, the, the TV series would reboot the movie. Um, if you'll remember, Stephen was okay, not a fan man. of the movie, obviously. Um, no, Stephen that isn't really would... saying that much, as he also wasn't a fan of the original Shining movie. I mean, yeah. But he's but not a fan, so he yeah. made his own. <laughs> exactly. I mean, so, he basically, he claimed that it was 100% because they aimed it at a, like, too young an audience. He was like, they went into this thinking it's going to be, like, PG-13 max. And I'll mm-hmm. agree. Like, that was, you know, for... And I haven't read the books. I only have, you know, I only know kind of the research that I did for the videos that we were doing on the movie last year, and it's it's got a good dose of horror in there. It's gritty. It's it's it's. I would say arguably like one of the less scary King books, but there's still some fucked up shit in there, and that really mm-hmm. did not come through in the movie at all. The movie kind of felt watered down. It was like you know, making it. It was almost, and I agree with his basic premise, that they went into the movie trying to make it, like, PG-13. You know, make it so that, you know, he, he claimed it was like, we want to get people from the ages of 12 to 35. And I was like, okay, I get that. Um, what's funny is, Idris Elba, at least from, uh, from what we know... <laughs> oh, as of December, Idris was still attached to the TV show. He, he, somebody asked him, I think Screen Crush asked him, hey... Yeah. How does, you know, what do you think about Stephen King saying it's going to be a reboot? Are you officially gone? He was like, I don't know if that's true. I'm the last to know about it. I was like, shit, all right. So, kind of sounds like Idris is still attached. Um, They probably want to keep him around for name recognition. Well, of course. You know, I would think the the kid alone is not going to do it. It'll work. Of course. Oh, the kid was what I don't think the kid's sticking around. I mean, hey, I don't know what his options are. I don't know if that, that movie got him a lot of calls. I'm just saying, you know. I don't want to be mean. I just, I, I really don't know. I, uh, it wasn't even bad. I think it's just the movie kind of sucked. Um, yeah. Oh, well. What's funny is this is now Amazon. Like I said, I feel like they're already, like, edging out Netflix in terms of quality because Netflix has taken this really interesting strategy of we're just going to, like, you know, whatever movie studios don't want to, like, go through the trouble of actually publishing in the theaters, we'll just we'll buy it from it. And it doesn't matter how bad it is. We're just going to put it up. And we're going to talk about that at the end of this show. Um, Amazon is consistently building, like, high-quality, like, premiere. They're getting a lot of titles. And they have a lot of good shows out already. 
but they've got shows like, you know, Dark Tower, Lord of the Rings. So Dark Tower, who knows? Is this too much? Like, is Dark Tower going to be really, like, a high priority for them? Or, you know, are they going to take their time with it and maybe crank out this Lord of the Rings show and, you know, yeah, maybe let people was, forget about the movie? Yeah, I was going to say, I think Lord oh. of the Rings will determine the quality of Dark Tower. Maybe. Like, my thing with Dark Tower is that the reason why it's still sticking around is just because... For whatever reason, in the last few years, Stephen King became hot again. Mm. Oh, yeah. So, like, I think that they want to get out sooner rather than later before the wave crashes down again. So, you know what's really interesting? Uh, speaking of Stephen King just having the hot hand, just printing money right now, everybody decides just that, hey, we love juice. his catalog. He's written hundreds of stuff. No, he has the sauce. He's got the sauce. <laughs> Stephen King He's is the sauce. sauced up now. He's the sauce. Uh, but... The uh, we've got a new Stephen King series coming. Another new Stephen King series, uh, the Bone Church, which I had never heard. It's actually a, a poem that was I think published in like Playboy. Bone Church is being developed as a TV series. Let me read you the synopsis, and we'll figure out if you're interested, and then I'll tell you who's developing it. All right. Um, Bone Church is a narrative poem that King wrote in the 1960s. He later revised it, and the poem was published as part of a King anthology, The Bazaar of Bad Dreams. Uh, so it was also published in Playboy. But um, basically, it's about an adventurer organizing an expedition uh, into a jungle to locate the Bone Church. Um, there, they discover they probably shouldn't have done that, and uh, only three of the 30-plus travelers escaped with their lives in a tale narrated by one of the survivors who tells stories from a bar stool to patrons who will buy him drinks. This is coming from the Deadline article, which, you know, I, you know I'm sure is pretty accurate. Really interesting. So I personally, it sounds cool. I mean, I don't think Amazon will buy this because they're going to be like, we already have Lost City of Z. I'm I'm interested. It sounds it sounds kind of cool. So the developers behind this, I'm sure you know Tim. Tim, I think posted this article earlier, so he probably knows who is who's behind this. But the uh, group developing this is Chris Long, who already has a pretty extensive relationship with Stephen King, apparently. Um, because of Mr. Mercedes. Uh, but uh, the other name attached in development is Cedar Park Entertainment. And you might have heard of Cedar Park Entertainment because that's David Ayer's production company. So oh, David Ayer boy. potentially getting in on Bone Church. Um, yeah. Really interesting. So, uh, and this is actually, you know, Chris Long is working at is he working at you know he's okay so he left audience after Mr. Mercedes to form Cedar Park with Air uh so that's really cool so what do you guys think about this is it the, is the fact that it's got Air involved kind of going to dissuade you from it or or what do you I think I mean he's not a bad filmmaker he just did very poorly on one particular film No I agree I think well a couple particular films, depending on how you feel about yeah. Bright. Um, I know I I love his work. Um, Training Day is great. Uh, it's one of li- li- literally like, hey, here's your first like major project. Knock it, way to knock it out of the park. Really love Fury as well. I really enjoy his End of Watch was really good. I think it kind of. I'd like to see him break the slump that he's in right now because after Suicide was, Squad and, and Bright, um, I want to see him get out of his police military wheelhouse and do something a little more adventurous in terms of characters. Yes. Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm interested to see here with, with this. Yeah. Cause that's, I don't want it to be like a tough. military expedition into the bone church and then they all die. Exactly. That movie's called Annihilation. Um, I was going to no, say Jumanji, I'm, but that works too. That movie's called Jumanji. No, I mean, I, I, I'd be interested in it. I mean, again, I, I, I kind of am left wondering when the Stephen King mania is going to end. I think it's just one of those things where you're when you're in an industry like Hollywood and you're constantly looking for things to adapt and constantly looking for new projects so you don't have to make a reboot of a reboot of a reboot and get called out you know, on Twitter. Um, I Stephen King has a ton of works that have just not been adapted. I mean, The Shining, It... Those are like pretty much the main two. I mean, there have been more than that, obviously, but there's he's still like the the guy's been writing for like f- you know fifty years, and he's still writing, uh, and he's got you know way more works that haven't been adapted than have. And I think people are just kind of realizing like it's like it's a gold mine, you know. It's, if you're looking to adapt something, why not start there? 
Well, it's not even necessarily that because this isn't a new phenomenon. Like they adapted a ton of his stuff in like the 90s. Like mm. most of what most of like his stuff coming back now seems to be tied into like the 90s nostalgia kick from recently. Yeah, I um. Are you are you guys interested? Are you or are you a little Stephen King down? Uh, uh, I mean, the sure. concept it's is interesting in of itself. Like it's a like a bunch of those like Amazon cannibal movies from like the 70s and 80s, where like a yeah. group goes into the jungle, get killed by the natives, and then the survivors have to deal with it. Mm, but knowing Stephen true. King, it'll be like some supernatural reason. For, that no one expects that comes way out of it's like oh yeah uh space ghosts actually killed them all it's like oh okay i mean i haven't read the poem so i'm probably wrong but still like, space ghosts like if they want to if they want to it's stick just like with a the, simple epic poem so i don't think that it has like the supernatural twist to it yeah which i mean that gives you a lot of liberty in terms of making a show out of it um an, an epic poem is a unique choice but I mean, you know, some are short, hey. some are rather hey. long. Who knows?